Mzanzi and welcome to the Food for Mzanzi and Neo Sun Energy webinar uh, titled Solar Solutions for a Sustainable Food Industry. Insights, of course, from Neo Sun Energy as well as Food for Mzanzi. My name is Duncan Masua, Assistant Editor for the Agricultural Publication Food for Mzanzi. And we're excited to have you join us for what we believe will be an insightful session on how solar energy is transforming the food sector. Of course, in the ever-evolving landscape of agribusiness, where efficiency and sustainability are key, innovative solutions are needed to ensure profitability as well as environmental stewardship. Now, among these solutions, solar energy has emerged as a transformative force now, with the ability to reduce energy costs, enhance agricultural productivity, and contribute to environmental goals, solar power is increasingly becoming an integral part of modern farming. Now, today, we'll explore this in detail and, of course, um, learn from industry experts as they share practical strategies for integrating solar solutions. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is, of course, an open platform where we'll have an opportunity for you to ask questions. Uh, but like I said, I'm not on my own. I'm joined by the Neo Sun Energy team, and uh, they will be giving us a series of presentations on some of the work that they've done um, and that they are doing within the agricultural landscape. So let's kick it off. Uh, Janine uh, joining us. Uh, she's the uh, head of sales at Neo Sun Energy. Janine Jackson, thank you so much for joining us. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Duncan. Thank you so much for the amazing introduction. Um, yes, yeah, so um, just a quick introduction of myself. I'm Janine Jackson and I'm the head of sales at Neo Sun Energy. Um, today I've got the amazing support of Jave Zumba, who is our head engineer. And then also Dita Bochad from Infant Finance, who will be taking us through um, uh, some education on PPA agreements. Um, and then we've also got Victor Mouton, um, who will be taking us some um, through some economic education and how um, solar benefits farmers. So yeah, I'm quite excited to kick today off. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. So just covering the agenda, we're going to cover um, a little short story about Neo Sun Energy. We're going to move over to some education on PPA agreements and how it benefits business, um, you know, uh, for future savings within the business. We're going to have a quick overview on how solar energy um, benefits your business, um, how Neo Sun Solutions um, benefits the solar, I mean, the food industry and how Neosun Energy can actively support your business. Then we're gonna take you through the economic benefits of um, what solar can bring to farmers. We can have a quick interactive Q&A session, and then we're done. Then we're gonna be wrapped up for the afternoon. So um, just a bit about Neosun Energy. We are a global EPC company, which provides a commercial solar PV and energy storage solution with a capacity of 200 kilowatts to 10 megawatts for commercial and industrial projects worldwide. We were founded in 2015 as a manufacturer of advanced solar panels and lithium ion batteries. And we now offer turnkey solutions all over the world. We've got a global footprint in 16 different countries. And our focus is to bring future sustainability and savings to our customers. With a strong focus on research and development, we are able to produce and supply an advanced energy solution for all your commercial installations. And our global presence allows us to reduce manufacturing and logistical costs. I'm excited to announce that our team in Joba consists of business development managers and sales support, as well as engineers who are equipped to offer you a personalized and tailored solution according to your business needs. Um, just to touch on um, our roadmap, so basically the roadmap for Neosun Energy is to build a McDonald's or a Starbucks for solar all over the world. Our head office is based in Hong Kong, and we boast beautiful branches in Dubai, Lahore, Karachi, Johannesburg, and Cape Town. We are excited to target manufacturing businesses, warehouses, shopping malls, retail parks, commercial offices, mining and industrial facilities, as well as pharmaceutical businesses. 
Um, yeah, so um, we're gonna, we've got an exciting session planned. In the comments box right now, what you can do is you can basically just type in your name and your surname, the, the, your title at the company you work for, as well as the company so that we can see who we're chatting to. At any point in the webinar, you're more than welcome to say hi. We're going to engage with you as much as we can. Um, yeah, and later we'll have more engagement opportunities. Um, I'd like to now hand the floor over to Dita Bochard, who's going to take us through um, the PPA agreements and give us some education on how PPA agreements can benefit our business and um, give us some savings in the long run. Thank you, Dita. Thank you, Janine. Okay, everyone, how's it? My name is Dita Bochard. I work for an amazing company called Enfin, short for Energy Finance. Uh, we established from France, so we are using international funding. We have been functioning in South Africa since uh, early, early 2021. Um, and obviously we are specializing in the power purchase agreement sector at the moment, as we didn't want to enter the rental game and other funding solutions. We wanted to focus on uh, our whole ethos, which is a client centric system where we're benefiting the clients, priority number one. We're also looking after EPCs like Neosun in South Africa as well. And uh, obviously, all benefits have to go towards the SCCG as well, um, as we know that it is a very big thing that is coming up in South Africa at the moment, um, looking at the whole demographic of South Africa. So I just want to quickly share with you. I don't know if I have got permission to share. If you guys want to just go ahead. Is it fine? Is it sorted? Okay. Anyways, I'm going to carry on speaking while, while it gives me an opportunity to share. Uh, can you guys see my screen or is it just still my video? Still your video. I'm sure it'll pop up in a minute, but you do have uh, sharing rights, did it? Okay, cool. Let's just quickly see. I was going to quickly do this. Let me try this. Is that better? Okay. Sorry, we, we are used to using Teams on my side. Very rarely do I ever. So as I told you guys, you guys can see my, my sharing screen. Everyone's aware, okay? So Infant Energy Finance, um, very simple. So I'm gonna quickly close this a little bit because this is in the way. Okay, so in Infant funds, insures, and maintains the, the solar solutions. And I think that's the biggest talking point when it comes to uh, power purchase agreements versus other forms of uh, funding is the fact that we are the asset managers. We own the assets that we are installing via Neosun on the client's behalf. Um, which in, endeavors us to insure it and also to maintain it through our operations and maintenance. Um, locations, we are we are distributed all over. We've got three main branches, Cape Town, uh, the central. Yeah? In a second, sorry. Just be sure that you have the correct um, document open. I think on our side, we're still seeing a, a list of um, files. Uh, on let me just quickly see it over here. I wonder why that is. Let me just see the sharing screens here. I'm going to quickly see why that's doing that. Okay, let me let me rather just cancel it, like I said. It's okay. Yeah, we go. Sorry, I forgot with teams. There we go. That's better. Eh? Everyone good? Perfect. Can you see what I'm? Okay, great. So as I mentioned now, sorry about that. Like I said, I've just had a lot of experience with uh, Zoom locations. Central Bloemfontein that focuses on a whole Northern Cape Free State. Lesotho and down to Eastern Cape, Western Cape, obviously, looking also over Western Cape. And then uh, myself, I head up the branch up here in Kauteng, which obviously focuses on Kauteng, Limpopo, Northwest, and so forth. Um, the main sectors that uh, we are, have identified that are the most beneficial for power purchase agreements, and obviously understanding that a power purchase agreement is a quantity over, over quality gain. The more electricity a client is using, the better and more positive effects we have on their cash flow, especially on a saving perspective. Um, I'm going to go more into depth now, uh, with all of that right now. So obviously the agricultural sector, which you guys are already focusing on as well. We've got the irrigation, cold storage, farming, and obviously packing facilities. Commercial stock standard, especially in Gauteng, is a very big industry. Same with the industrial sector. And then obviously also education and other sectors. Also hospitality, hotels. Uh, residential and so forth. Okay, so big reason. Why do customers want to go with a power purchase agreement versus any other rental form? 
obviously when we finance our, our system through either the banks or rental companies, it is all on balance sheets, rentals, uh, cash flow. Um, it will appear on your credit facility. And that is a big thing for a lot of big uh, guys and companies is that they don't want their credit facilities to become diminished because of solar. They want to know that if they're installing a 20 million rand system on their roof, that that 20 million rand is not going to be taken off their cash flow books through the banks in case they want to do expansions and so forth. So the nice thing about it is from a customer side, there's zero capital outlay from their side. Souls and everyone doesn't know what's happening. Power purchase agreement, obviously, with, with in conjunction with Neosun and our own in-house engineers, we ensure that the systems are spec'd 100% according to the client's desired outcome to ensure that we offer them the best tariff at all times throughout the year that they will see a positive cash flow. Because the problem is, hence, once again, if we go with rentals and financing through the bank, you will sign an ironclad contract that will stipulate that you will pay a fixed amount per month. The reason why you want to bring in a power purchase agreement, especially if you're a high energy consumer, is to have the flexibility that you're only paying for the electricity you use. And that's, the, in essence, the biggest reason why anyone's going to go power purchase agreement. Because we might have, for example, if I'm in an industrial commercial sector, I might have certain downtime throughout the year Maybe in December, I see that there is a negative drop in my, in my consumerism within my business or in wholesale or whatsoever. We close down from, let's say, the 10th of December all the way up until the 10th of Jan. Now, a lot of companies that have gone through the rental aspect will have to pay for that month. But now through a power purchase agreement aspect, the client is almost sort of looked after and tailor-made that even in that season where as a low season is still covered. Roof rentals, we're not going to focus too much on that because it's um, the, certain guys that do want to do roof rentals are obviously just a bit crazy on that side. Obviously, everyone's already educated with the different types of solar systems. I mean, we're not sitting here with a bunch of people that don't understand what they, they know. So that's pretty simple. But as we go, grid side is obviously the biggest priority, especially with the power purchase agreement, because the rate per watt is extremely low giving us the opportunity to provide a greater saving for the clients. I mean, in general, on power purchase agreements, if we focus on a grid side for a client, you will a client will see anything from a 35 to up to some cases a 65% saving on the electricity bill. Um, and, and obviously, we have to keep in mind that electricity is purely daylight electricity. We're not, we're not saying that we're going to be saving you 65% of your entire electricity bill. We have to keep it realistic. It's daytime. Obviously, once we go off-grid, that's a different scenario. Off-grid is a great solution for your agricultural sector. Uh, like you guys would know, fuel saving is very big with our mining sector. Um, the guys that have already got massive, massive diesel generators installed, we go put down a, a grid tire system, do the gen integration, and Bob's your uncle, we've got the, and then obviously the hybrid savings. Um, yeah, we've got obviously massive references on some of the sites that we obviously already have on our books. And we're monitoring and as I stipulate it. Now I'm gonna stop sharing over here because obviously I wanna I wanna speak to you guys a little bit. So I hope uh, let's just quickly get this back. Okay. And uh, I don't know if I'm back. Anyways. Duncan, okay, yeah. So Janine, um very simple um to get back to the power purchase. Obviously, I was I was throwing a bit on the bus for us not to be asked to be in a panelist over here, so I didn't have a match. And obviously, we always present with Q and A's. Short and sweet infants. Um, yeah, we've got the capital. We're not using apps or anyone else's money. We've got our own in-house capital. We've got more than enough money from from overseas from Europe. We want to back companies like Neosan in South Africa. That's why we don't have our own installation companies. We don't have our own technician companies. We want you guys to do the full spectrum of that. We want to back you guys all the way with all of your clients to make sure and ensure that the clients have got a, a well-rounded, well-funded solution that will back them. Um, and let's go back to the points of no zero, zero caps or outlay for the clients. Um, insurance is included. Operations and maintenance is included. Everything is included. The client will receive an invoice once a month that will stipulate, they say, for example, they signed at 150 a kilowatt times by the amount of kilowatts that they consumed in that month. And that will be the only invoice. There's no deposit. There's no subscription fees. There's nothing. We only escalate with anything from 6 to 7%, whatever the client signs on. 
uh, once per year, which is nothing compared to what ESCOM and, and Centlic and all, all these other municipalities are expecting at the moment, especially if you look at the heights that they want to go through. Um, and uh, clients have got the opportunity to upgrade, downgrade the system throughout the, the contract as well. We also do include clauses like an early buyout clause, which is very, very comfortable for the clients, especially on bigger sites, especially on sites where the clients do have a strong funding system within their, within their own company. And they would like to use Infin's money to fund Neosun's uh, system to see how it works over the next two or three years. And once they feel at, at peace at their heart that they, they see how well the system works, they see the great return of investment that the system gives, and then they can go out and purchase the system back in full and take full ownership. And then they'll obviously sign a separate operations and maintenance contract with Neosun to look after it. So as as Infin, if I if I if I can round ourselves up versus a lot of the other funders in the in the industry, because I do work very closely with a lot of the other guys, we offer a great amount of flexibility that's tailor-made for the client. Um, with every single one of our clients, when we head into the final contractual phase, we give them full, full, full light to to please change and alter the contract as they feel fit. Because at the end of the day, if a client is going to sign anywhere from a 10 to 25 year power purchase agreement, the client needs to have so much peace at their heart that they're signing with a company that is going to look after them for the remainder. So it's literally like inching into a marriage. So we have to have full transparency walking into this marriage. Um, and we need to know that both of us are going to benefit out of this. At the end of the day, it doesn't help you try and um, neglect a client within the first year, but you've got a 20 year agreement. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna disable me. It's gonna disable the clients, and it's gonna disable Neosun as the installer as well. So that's the beauty that I love about a power purchase agreement is that everyone's here to benefit. But at the same time, if if the circle is not complete, all of us are gonna go down together as well. And that's that to me is reassurance uh, to the clients, and that's why I sell it to a lot of the clients is that not no one can benefit more than the other one in the spectrum. It's not like going and taking money from the bank. The bank doesn't care whether the installation is done correctly or not. As long as they've deployed the money and the client has signed the contract, they're getting their money back. And that's just it. Whereas with a power purchase agreement, if the system does not work according to the agreed upon specs, the client does not have to pay for the electricity because the service is not being provided. And this gives so much safety and, and, and security to the client to know that if the system does not generate what was promised, the client can walk away at any time because it's a service agreement. And then Infin has to pull out the money along with Neosun to make sure that the system is back up and operational to give the client the service that they desired from the beginning. So in a nutshell, that's very short. Janine, uh, Duncan, I don't know if there's any other topics you guys want to pick up or should we leave the rest for the q and I don't want to speak too much, obviously, because we've got a timeline. Duncan, you guys good? Thank you so much, Dite, um, for that um, uh, presentation on power purchase agreements. Of course, understanding what they are, how they work, and of course, the benefits of, the, of that. We'll leave the questions uh, for the Q&A session a bit later, sure. uh, and then we'll go into the next part of our program, of course. Janine, uh, over to you. Just unmute your mic there. Sorry, guys, technology will always work against us when we're in front of a lot of people. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you, Dita, for that insightful educational session um, regarding PPA uh, document, um, PPA agreements. Um, you know, the one thing that was so that resonated with me was peace of mind for our customers. Um, and also, you know, the amount of savings that the customer will be able to see over a certain amount of time. So it's very different to your rental uh, or your rent to own agreements. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to mitigate risk. And, you know, if we don't um, uh, go according to every single thing or every single um, promise that we put in the PPA agreement, the customer is not liable to pay for us. It's very important for us to know that through these PPA agreements, our customers will have 
um, peace of mind and they will grow towards, their businesses will grow towards a more sustainable and um, a future of stay savings. Without further ado, um, I'd like to hand the floor over to Herve, which is our head, our head engineer. Um, and yeah, anytime through this webinar, you're more than welcome to put your questions in the Q&A box. Um, and at the end, we'll also have a little form that you, you can complete so that one of our business development managers can contact you after this webinar. Uh, Herve, thank you so much. We look forward to your presentation. Uh, thank you, Janine. Uh, my name is Herve Sumba. I'm a senior engineer at Neo Sun Energy. I'm um, head of construction as well as uh, engineering. Uh, Roshan, can you please bring up the presentation? Perfect. Uh, thank you. Um, let's uh, start from the uh, main activity from Neo Sun Energy. So Neo Sun Energy is a global EPC company, EPC which stands for Engineering, Procurement and Construction. Uh, but on top of that, uh, Neo Sun also design and manufacture its own panels, solar panels, inverters, as well as batteries. And we do the design of the solar PV system and battery storage from 50 kilowatt up to 10 megawatt. Uh, but if there is a, any need for a system above 10 megawatt, we are more than capable of uh, designing and implementing that uh, project. Uh, looking at um, overview uh, of the solar energy benefit, um, first of all, um, the need for installing solar PV system and battery backup, it's, it's mostly for cost savings. Uh, we have seen how the price of electricity is uh, shooting up and you having a, your own source of energy. That means that you are not exposed to the hiking uh, electricity tariff. That's cost savings. We look at low maintenance cost. The solar PV system does not have any moving parts. That means that it requires less maintenance, which means that you have to spend less on the maintenance. It gives you independence. In terms of energy, you, you don't have to rely on the national grid. You can be able to generate your own clean energy because you have got access to the solar, to the sunshine. And also it does increase the value of the property. We all know that if you have got solar PV system installed on top of your roof, the value of your property, uh, your property uh, sorry, goes up. Uh, next slide. Um, so um, looking at the solution that we have got for the food industry, see that uh, by having your solar PV system, you can be able to provide your own clean energy uh, into the processing uh, plant. And this helps you reduce your energy, uh, reduce your electricity bills and also save you on carbon emission. You can be able to power up your equipment and machineries. Um, next, uh, next slide. And also this uh, provide a reduction in our operating uh, cost, uh, which means that if you spend less on um, energy provided, then uh, price of the food goes also down, which means that it actually benefit the end user, who is the consumer. And you've got a backup solution, which means that regardless of uh, the grid instability, you can be able to generate your power through your solar PV system, as well as your battery backup. And you've got an opportunity to have an off-grid solution, which means that for remote places, remote areas where there is no grid, you can be able to uh, supply power using solar and uh, battery backup. And uh, also you can also run automated feeders, light and ventilation for livestock facilities. So in terms of solutions that are being offered by Neo Sun Energy, we have got uh, three different solutions. One would be the on-grid solution, uh, second one off-grid, and then we've got a hybrid solution. Let's start from the on-grid solution. So the on-grid solution is the cheapest solution because it's uh, just made of solar panels and inverters. So the solar panels absorb the irradiation from the sun and then take it through yeah. the inverter and then uh, the inverter convert it into reusable energy for your home appliances. Um, this setup can reduce your electricity bills by up to 55%. And you can even go more than 55% if you shift your load during the day. And you've got also an opportunity or um, an option to export the excess power into the grid and then get uh, credit from the municipality or directly from ESCOM. This is a case study of uh, one of the farm in Malanga, 105 kilowatts fixed system. Uh, the total project cost was about 1.1 million. And um, if the client would purchase this system on once off, he will get about 55% uh, 
build reductions. Uh, but however, if you need to go for PPO or rent on, it you will still see savings of up to 35%, 35.1%, which means that with zero investment, you can still make savings of up to 35.1%. Next one. So the second setup is uh, going to be an off-grid solution. So um, this is mostly for remote places and mine. So off-grid solution, it's actually providing you 100% of energy demand. It's actually a system that is covering up your full energy consumption because there is no grid available. So the way um, the off-grid uh, system works is that during the day, you've got the solar panels that are generating energy the energy flows through to your load. And if there is any excess energy generated during the peak hours, that energy is being stored into the battery backup. And then you can be able to use that battery backup outside of the daylight or uh, during cloudy days. And uh, it um, it's actually more beneficial because it helps you extend your self-consumption. That means that you don't, use, you don't lose that excess power generated during the day. You actually store it into the battery and use it um, later during uh, during the night or outside of the daylight. Um, so this is one of um, uh, NeoSun Power Hub solution, it's a container solution. It's, uh, it's ready-made, it's easy to assemble. It takes about two to four hours to put it together. It comes with panels in two different sizes, 12 kilowatts and 50 kilowatts. This is mostly for remote places uh, site construction as well as mining. You can be able to, to use this into the food industry as well. And um, next slide. Uh, as you can see, it can be able to, it can be customized to look like an office where you've got some chairs, you've got tables, um, and it comes up with the air conditioning and the container is fully customized to be used as an office. And so the application for this power hub uh, it's mostly for uh, mining and industrial facility, road construction, uh, rural grocery shops, post office, and um, other places where there is no grid available. And then you've got a hybrid solution. So this hybrid solution has got um, the main role of hybrid solution is actually to reduce your electricity bills and also provide security of supply, which means that in a case of grid failure, you can still rely on the battery backup to provide power to your load. Um, within the hybrid solution, we have three scenarios. One scenario will be if your solar PV system is generating more power than what you need for your place, uh, the excess energy is then stored into a um, battery. And for the second scenario is if your solar PV system is generating less than what you require from, from your household, the Solar PV system will generate power, and then you can be able to source excess power from the battery cover up for your load consumption. And uh, third one is uh, when your solar PV system is generating exactly the same amount of what you need. Power is just flowing through to your load directly. Thus, there is no need of you drawing power from the grid, which means that it can actually provide you uh, security of supply and a great reduction in electricity bills. So this is a, a case study of uh, a processing plant in Hateng, uh, where we've got a 348 kilowatt solar PV system with a eight kilo, 800 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, on a cash purchase, the client will see uh, energy um, reduction or bill reduction of up to 90.41%. However, if you need to go for a PPO or rent to own option, you will still see a uh, uh, reduction uh, of up to 75.73%. But this is with no upfront payment. So on top of um, Neosan being a global EPC company, we also have our after sale uh, services, which is the operation and maintenance. After we have built, construct solar PV system, we don't leave you on your own. We take care of the system, which is part of our customer service. We provide the operation and maintenance, which means that we have to keep on monitoring your solar PV system after commissioning. We do the online monitoring. If there is any issue, we can be able to address that and then get a technician to site if there is a need to get a technician to site. And we've got also a preventive maintenance, which is 
and that we we make sure that we prevent any issue that may arise. That means that we visit the site every quarter of the year uh, to check the hotspots, uh, to clean up the panels, just to make sure that solar PV system is generating as per our prediction. Um, next one. So how can Neosan support your business? So Neosan can support your business in reducing your electricity bills. We all agree that uh, by installing solar PV system and battery backup solution, you can be able to reduce your energy consumption as you will have to save on your uh, electricity bills. And you've got energy independence, which means that you uh, don't have to rely on the grid or national grid. You then, you have a second source of supply. That means that you have got um, options. And um, also you kind of saving the planet, doing the right thing by uh, reducing the carbon footprint. And um, also there is an operational efficiency. So when you have got uh, Neosan energy, uh, when you've got solar PV system and battery uh, backup storage, you uh, have less uh, interruption. If the grid fails, you don't actually feel it because you have got battery backup that you rely on. And uh, this is a long-term investment, which means that you can actually also uh, plan your cash flow because you know more or less, if you are on a PPA, you know more or less how much you pay per month than uh, being surprised by ESCOM hike. To say that next year is 36% increase, the following year is 50% increase. However, with solar PV system and PPA, you can be able to predict and know that next year there is a 7% increase and uh, you can be able to plan your cash flow accordingly. So these are some of the side that we have um, Done. This is a, um, a rooftop a 58 kilowatt peak system made of Canadian solar, uh, Canadian solar panels. Uh, this site sees about 88 megawatt hour uh, energy generation per year, and uh, they see savings of up to 55%. And this is also a rooftop uh, with um, a triangle tit, uh, which is 66 kilowatt peak system, uh, more than 60 megawatt hour um, energy generation. And this is a ground mount. This is just to show you that uh, Neosan have got expertise uh, from rooftop to ground mount solar uh, solution. This is a Fox Lodge Hotel, which is about 102 kilowatt peak system with an energy yield of above 110 megawatt hour in a year. And uh, these are the example of uh, some other mounting, uh, ground mount mounting system, 117 kilowatt peak system with more than 160 megawatt hour energy generation in a year. This is an irrigation system uh, for irrigation, mostly for uh, farming. It's 582 kilowatt peak system, and uh, this is 100% renewable. It, uh, it's not a great tire solution. It's actually providing uh, power for this irrigation plant, which is independently running off solar and battery backup. And this is an example of our power hub solution uh, this is the smaller version of it. Uh, as said initially, we uh, can customize it to the client need. Um, perfect. Uh, so that's it from my side. Janine, uh, I will hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jose, for that informative session. Um, it's also nice to know that Neosun Energy offers, you know, some guarantees and warranties on the systems. Uh, it's important for our customer to also understand, um, you know, that there's a 12 year in, I think there's a 12 year warranty on our solar PV with uh, 25 years on performance and then taking us through to our inverters and our battery backup warranty. So it's also very important that when you're purchasing a solar system that you understand um, you know, how long your system will last you for, and those are all covered in your PPA agreement, as well as if you buy the, the system cash, um, it also is included in your agreements with Neosun Energy South Africa. 
Uh, thank you so much, Jave. We're now going to move on to Victor Mouton, who's going to take us through the economic benefits that solar brings to farmers. Just a quick reminder that you're more than welcome to um, put your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of the uh, screen, um, just in case you're feeling a bit shy to speak on the microphone. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. We look forward to your um, presentation. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'll just introduce myself and the company I, I work for. Um, so I uh, work for the Sustainability Initiative South Africa. Um, my current role is a sustainability officer and agriculture economist. Um, so basically what we do is we have the ESG standard uh, for South Africa in which Producers and farmers get audited uh, to reach international markets. So we do work with a lot of the, um, on the environmental side of, of the ESG standard with a lot of um, solar, and we've seen this um, popping up, um, well, basically everywhere across the country. Um, they have asked me to, to elaborate on the economic benefits of solar and what it brings to farmers especially. Um, when looking at it at economic scale, um, it's quite important to take note that there's a lot of um, inputs uh, that do influence farmers' profitability. So firstly, electricity, they're quite especially irrigation farmers, with fruit and any cash crop under a pivot or with micro or um, irrigation or drip irrigation, they quite reliant on on, on, on water and especially electricity. Um, they're quite vulnerable to cost by fertilizer. Um, so if all these costs increase, um, the profitability margins decrease. So on the economic scale, when you look at um, how electricity tariffs have increased um, from 2007 till now, it's usually above inflation. And um, with last year being something between 12.34% and this year it went up by 18 point something percent. Uh, you can quote me on that, don't quote me on that, but it's approximately 18% in terms of electricity tariff. Um, so that means all the costs increase. So in terms of um, the economic benefit, it makes mitigate risk um, when it comes to um, load shedding. Um, I'm a firm believer that it hasn't disappeared as of yet and I think electricity tariffs won't um, soon stabilize towards um, inflation uh, or the same rate as inflation. So, in terms of a general overview for the entire agri sector, um, it does mitigate risk and lowers cost. And from an exporting um, perspective, your markets and your consumers in first world countries are looking at lower carbon emissions in terms of especially stuff like fresh products like fruits. Um, so it's good when they get audited um, to note these type of things and report that they are using um, especially solar technology. Um, in terms of um, some of the other questions they asked me to, to prepare, so they asked me how to prepare about the implementation of solar energy, um, especially in terms of irrigation, backhouses, greenhouses, and livestock watering, and how these systems contribute to yields and farm efficiency. As I previously mentioned and, and, and I've spoken about, um, it lowers costs, uh, but in essence, it lowers risk. Um, in terms of farmers and the situation they find themselves in, they're quite reliant on, on, on the environment and um, things like climate change is an issue. Um, so being able to mitigate something within the spectrum of production economics um, you are quite reliant on a sustained supply of electricity. Uh, so not having electricity or once again going back to load shedding, um, this whole system um, mitigates the fact that you won't possibly have electricity. Um, they've asked me to elaborate on the landscape over the next few years um, as well. So in terms of what we've seen um, across South Africa, a lot of producers, especially where I work in the Western Cape, we've seen a lot of implementation of solar, um, meaning that the solar systems will be um, used for the next 20 or 25 years as they are a long-term investment. 
Um, so I I personally see um, the program or not the program or solar energy as technology advances uh, becoming more relevant, especially with stuff like the carbon tax act might move over to phase two quite soon in which it touches on the agri sector as well. Um, so that will lower your carbon emissions and um, obviously have a benefit as well. Um, so final point from my side, we as a, as a company or as an NPC or a non-profit corporation or organization, we developed a record keeping program specifically for producers um, to track their inputs or their main inputs um, for the CESA digital record keeping program in which they um, read in all of the information. So obviously electricity, grid and um, solar, water usage, so the amount they irrigate, the amount they subtract from the water, fertilizer use, chemical use, um, which in essence um, writes a report for the producer, making it easy to track um, their main inputs. And they can use this information to either calculate the carbon footprint to the third party or to report the information uh, to their markets overseas as well. Um, so in a nutshell, um, from my side, um, I am very ambitious to see, or very excited to see um, what solar can do for the agri sector, um, especially in the times we move in and uh, how the technology can advance and, and, and not how the, and Afrikaans, let's say, how the, the slim corporate, how the, how the smart guys figure out ways to, to make it more efficient. Uh, thank you for having me speak and, uh, and having me here. Thanks. Thank you so much, Victor. It's clear that uh, there's definitely one thing about the agricultural sector is that it's uh, completely innovative. And uh, of course, solar energy being one of those uh, uh, innovation strategies that we are implementing on agricultural farms. There's a, a lot of questions coming through. Um, Janine, I'm not sure if you're ready to go into the questions. I've got a couple of questions. One um, that looks like a question that Victor could possibly answer. Um, Janine? Okay, great. Yes, thank you. We're definitely ready to go into the Q&A session. Um, Victor, you're right. Load shedding is definitely into the building, but savings and sustainability... No, load shedding has left the building, but savings and sustainability has entered the building for the future. Uh, yes, we're ready to go in through uh, the interactive Q&A session. Um, I'm going to be reading it from my colleague's laptop. Um, so let's go. So the first one is for Dita. How much funding is granted by ENFIN, and is this only for installers? What are some of the criteria that ENFIN is looking for? How's it? Um, okay, so yeah, we obviously, I mean, the funding is really available. Um, the, the was the question how much we have. So how much is how much funding is granted by infant? Um, so currently we're sitting in our coffers right now. We've got three point six billion. Um, we do have um a lot more available. Um, but obviously, I mean, we don't want it to to lie around here for too long. So that's that. What's the next question? What are some of the criteria that Infin is looking for? Okay, so criteria from a client side. Yes, correct. Okay, cool. So criteria from a client side is obviously we do a stereotypical uh, career application like you would if you walked into MTN or Vodacom. Um, just to do affordability background checks. Uh, make sure that that all payments are up to date. So fourth was obviously if we're going to be entering into a 20 year agreement, we would have to ensure that uh, the client is a high paying client. It's not someone that runs away from their bills and that. So one of the biggest criteria we do look at that is very, very evident in some of our clients. And we actually had a, a certain case scenario uh, with one of one of the near Sun clients. I don't know if you guys can recall, but anyways, we're not going to name any names of a client that refused to pay his ESCOM um, bills. And unfortunately, how that resulted in him being blacklisted in certain ways. And obviously, I mean, if a client's not willing to pay ESCOM, uh, I doubt they're going to pay anything. Okay. okay Anything else? So, yeah, so okay. management accounts, all that kind of stuff, obviously, has to be up to date. 
Uh, we're looking for eligible clients. We're not looking for people that are shady, that are trying to get away from um, ESCOM, trying to evade tech and that kind of stuff. Because obviously we ourselves, like I'm sure Leo said, is also, we are constantly under the microscope with uh, SARS and other uh, organizations to ensure that all of our code of ethics and everything is up to standard. Okay, great. Thank you so much for answering that question, Dita. Our next question is for Ahave. How can solar power improve energy efficiency and reduce costs for farmers like myself using irrigation systems? How much money will I really save? All right, perfect. So in terms of um, savings, uh, that can only be done when we, we know exactly how much you spend on, on energy consumption on your electricity bills currently. Uh, but however, if you're only looking at uh, re reduction in your electricity bills, we will uh, propose a grid tire solution, uh, which of course works during the day when the sun is available and you will have to uh, change some of your be behavior of shifting most of your load during the day for you to uh, to get the full benefit of the solar PV system. The reduction in bills can go up to 55%, even more if you shift your um, load during the day. Okay, great. Thank you, Habe. Um, The next question is for Victor. Regarding the increase in electricity prices, can Neosun Solutions help businesses and homeowners save a few bucks? I think that question would be more for Habe than Victor. But Victor, if you're comfortable to jump in and add, no problem. Um, no, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's much better for him. I um obviously find myself within the agricultural sector. Okay, great. Um, I okay. can pop in on his question as well on, okay, on cool. how much uh, producers do so. Um, in terms of um, the efficiency, or just to answer that question, it, it gets quite complicated. It depends on crop and what type of crop they're producing and how the cash flow um, works. So if they've got cash crops, like soybeans, maize, sunflower, um, it differs from the fruit industry. So if they if they can specify the fruit, I can possibly give them a, a rough estimate of what the amount of savings could be potentially. Okay, great. Have you want to also give it a shot? Uh, yeah, of course I can jump in. So um, uh, looking at the increased price of um, electricity currently. Um, Remember, uh, the solar PV system generates the same unit of electricity as the one you get from uh, ESCOM or from any municipality you are connected to. Uh, let's say if your previous energy electricity bills was uh, 2 rand per kilowatt hour, and if it is increased to 3 rand, that means that uh, every unit of electricity that you generate through solar, you're saving about 3 rand, which means that you even increase your savings uh, if the electricity price goes up. Thank you, Abe. Thank you for answering that question. And we've got another question that says, is this food industry, if food industries have consumed much more energy per day as approximately 5,000 kilowatt hours, 2,000 kilowatt hours required, and nighttime 3,000 kilowatt hours required, what are the solutions that you can design? They have not, they don't have sufficient roof, rooftop for the same is the solve with high efficient panels? This question is for you, Habe. So in this case, uh, definitely we have to look at uh, ground mount um, system or a carport, depending on uh, the available land from the client. Um, so the question was, uh, yeah, so the, the system that we can design here, we uh, definitely, if there is a night consumption, then there is a need to put in a battery backup solution. Um, and uh, the purpose of putting up a battery uh, is uh, because during the day, there is times where the solar PV system is generating more power than what you require. Let's say, for example, uh, your question you say per day, you use uh, about two, 3,000 during the day and then 2,000 during the night. And then there is some other days where the sun is shining and the solar PV system is just generating more than 3,000. And then there is a need to store the excess power into the battery and then we can then discharge the battery during the night um, to be able to extend yourself 
consumption and also reduce even further your um, electricity bills. Thank you, Jose. Um, if there's any more questions that you haven't got an opportunity to ask in the chat box, we'll give you some time. Um, if you could just mention the person's, na person's name and they will answer the questions. Uh, see, we have one more year. Are there any cost-effective products or services for the medium-sized farmer that is looking to save expenditure in their business? Havay, do you want to take that question? Uh, that sounds uh, a little bit more on the finance side. Um, say, are there any... So, let me repeat the question. I think it's more for you. Is there any mm -hmm. cost-effective products or service for the medium-sized farmer that is looking to save expenditure in their business? So probably yeah, cost effective tech, I would assume. Yeah, definitely. We, we, we have got, uh, uh, at Neosan Energy, we uh, always use tier one component uh, from solar panels to the inverter, as well as the battery. Uh, but however, for a medium-sized farmer, we, we have got a solution for that. We, we can use uh, tier one inverter, tier one panels. Uh, as well as battery backup. And definitely that we'd be able to provide you with savings on your expenditure. Okay, great. Thank you for answering that, um, Jave. Um, If there's any more questions, oh, there's one more. Um, what is the minimum amount for a PPA funding? Dita, this question would be for you. Okay, so so uh, what we've picked up with the cash flow analysis, uh, obviously over like 15 to 25 years, is that in generally you're not going to see a massive saving for the client if the system is under about 100 kilowatt peak, um, and this applies to both grid ties and um, battery systems. So we've got a lot of sub 100 kilowatt peak systems in the field right now. And uh, what was projected on paper versus real time because of the municipalities and ESCOMs and all of the ups and downs, they haven't shown as great savings as what they could. So we found that the threshold to start with that is about 100 kilowatt peak and above. Um, and that can thing from 1.5 million up to 3 million rand and above. Okay, great. Thank you for answering that, Dita. We've got another question in the comments box. What does the pricing of Neosun products look like? Would you say that it has affordability across all industries? Have this one is for you. Yeah, we remember we've got a very competitive price. Uh, first of all, because we do manufacture our own, pan our own panels, uh, that means that we can play around with the margin and then adjust to the client's need. Um, together with the, the inverter as well as the mounting structure. So Neosan looks uh, uh, more competitive uh, within the market currently. Thank you, Ove. Thank you for answering that. Um, any more questions? Uh, Jadine, I think you skipped one question, which uh, which type of battery system you oh, recommend. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've skipped one question. Which type of battery system do you re recommend if going with a battery system that ROI needs and how long uh so in terms of battery we, we work with a t1 uh lithium ion batteries uh those are the battery we work with and it comes with about 10 year warranty and more than 6000 cycle um that means that you can cycle that battery every single day and then you still have um about 80 percent of its maximum capacity after 10 years um so in terms of return on investment it Preferably to have it uh, between, let's say, below 10 years, uh, which is about, let's say, between four to six years, just because the battery warranty is about 10 years. So it's always better to recoup your investment before 10 years. Thank you, Abe. What are some of the benefits that farmers can receive from SARS, such as a tax deduction? Uh, Dita, do you want to attempt answering this question? Let me quickly have a read at it. You say which one is it? It's the last one. What are some of the benefits that farmers can receive from SARS, such as a tax deduction? Ooh, okay, yeah. So obviously, if a client does go with a PPA, they will not be receiving that. If the client does go out and purchase, uh, then obviously they can go out and claim the 12B or the 12J. 
I think definitely uh, Mr. Mouton would have a, a definite answer for this as well, because he deals with the agriculture. But that's what they're going to basically see. I, I think the incentive at the moment is that one that 125%. Um, but that also looks like it's coming to an end this financial year as well, though. They're going to be dropping it a little bit. So it's not going to be as high. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question accurately. Okay, great. Um, Victor, do you want to also attempt trying to answer this question for the customer? Um, I think Peter has covered the majority of it. Um, there's not much I can add on, on, on SARS and, and tax reductions. Um, okay. okay, perfect. Um, we'll take a few more questions before we wrap up the session. How do solar power systems improve business output, outputs and profitability? Uh, Have do you want to answer that question for us? Have a uh, surgeon and I was on mute. Uh, can you read again the question? What's the question? How do solar power systems improve business outputs and profitability? Of course, when you've got a solar PV system installed, um, the snow burner, you, you you will definitely have to realize savings. And savings comes in the fact that you um, you don't draw much power from the grid, but you're actually drawing power from the solar PV system because that's the closest or the nearest um, energy generation that you have. Then you have to draw from the solar PV system before you rely on the grid, which means that you have got a reduction in your electricity bills or energy consumption from the grid that makes you save in the long run. And of course, in terms of cash flow for the company, you kind of increase profitability and um, yeah, um, have more savings in the long run. Thank you, Jave. Thank you so much for that. Um, I've got one more question for Dita, and that will be our last question for the session. Is the 12B tax claim still available after the early buyout of the system? Um, it, 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 can, it can't be because obviously uh, how SARS works at the moment is the first person that claims a 12 jail or 12B receives the full benefit of that. That benefit cannot be handed over. But what we do differently though, so this is another thing that, that we have to discuss. So what we do is we don't claim the 12 jail or the 12B when we install a system with our financing through Neosun, what we do is we do 20 years provisional tax. So we go and recoup 20 years worth of provisional tax back. We then put it back into the original funding algorithm to help assist the client to get the, the PPA tariff down even lower. And we've went and worked out if you take that saving that we're going to give the client over the 20 years, it is far, far, far greater than if the clients had gone for the 12J or the 12B from day one, um, which is, like I said, they state it's 125%, but it actually comes on equivalently to about 33.4%. Thank you so much, Dita. Uh, so we've run out of time for this session. Um, a special thank you for joining us on this webinar this afternoon. We so appreciate your presence. Please kindly fill in the form at the end of the webinar. And if you'd like one, if you'd like one of our business development managers to contact you to tailor a solution for you, um, I see Hervé's raised his hand. Hervé. Um, hi, Janine. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just want to answer to this question. Yes. Uh, seems quite quite important. Uh, the, um, uh, it says, is this food industry have heavy loads of inductive load if done before the solar plant? There should be done energy auditing and consulting green technologies. Loads will decrease. Why you don't recommend BLDC for the inductive load before solar plant? What would you, Neosan be, uh, method be? Uh, so uh, our approach usually is that we, we do a site visit and uh, sometimes we look at the site to see uh, what's the load consumption, what's the peak demand. And this is mostly for hybrid solution because you've got battery backup and then you've got an inverter that need to provide power when um, there is load shedding. But for a grid tire solution, there is there is no really much need to know what's the peak load. It's uh, just a matter of providing a system that reduces your electricity bills. Uh, 
Um, if you would like to know what Neosan would recommend here, usually we work with the VSD, which is the variable speed driver. In the case where the um, you've got more inductive load, uh, but we can take this discussion offline. Um, you have got our contact details. We can discuss this further. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you so much, Jose. Um, Yes, you're more than welcome to reach uh, out to us on LinkedIn um, or email your questions to us. And one of our technical teams, um, one of our technical people will definitely be able to assist you with all your questions. Um, we also would like you to complete the form at the end of the webinar if you'd like to be contacted by one of our specialized business development managers. Uh, just a, a quick announcement also, we'll be hosting a business network breakfast on the 22nd of October, 2024. If you'd like a personal invite, please can you contact Roshan Reddy, which are, she's our marketing manager at Neosan Energy. I will drop her email address in the comment, comment section. Um, we've got a few seats left, so if you can just book your seat as soon as possible. And it will be an amazing opportunity to um, connect with myself, Dita, and the rest of the Neosan team. Thank you for joining us joining us today we're looking forward to bringing a greener sustainable future for your business um and yeah we'd like to also take duncan and victor for um joining us today and um Dita, thank you for your time as well and to all the staff and to all the attendees um that joined on this insightful webinar we really appreciate you and just remember if there's any questions you're more than welcome to reach out to us and yeah we look forward to um the opportunity to save you on your electricity bill thank you okay, everyone have a very good day for them thanks janine thank you everyone cheers bye-bye bye, -bye. Uh, bye everyone.